Well, we're all done here in Lexington, Kentucky. What a day. Everybody's tired, even Addie Bear. I wanted to let her sleep for a little bit because I know she wants to go to the pool and we have to go to dinner tonight. So the timing is perfect. The horses are eating. They're ripping the buckets off the wall. Everybody under the stable that is in Lexington, Kentucky is super happy right now. The horses, the humans, everyone. Uh, just a great day. Um, I really, you know, Amy had said to me, uh, you know, you're, oh, you're having a good day because the horses race good. And I said, no, I'm having a good day. No, but that's what you didn't mean anything by it. But what she meant was, well, if you had a bad day, you wouldn't be so chipper. Sure. I wouldn't be super chipper, but I didn't come here to crush everyone. I thought that, I thought that we would come here and have a, there's our man. What's his name? Barry. Barry. Yeah. Thanks again, Barry. Thank you. This guy, we show up and, uh, like that's right. We show up. And uh, we have no help. Um, when we left, we knew some people that had friends and family in Kentucky. And they said, don't worry about it. There'll be lots of help down there. That was a bull-faced lie. There is no help down here because everyone here is here for steak week. And everyone was racing today. So Amy and I have the three kids. So Amy already has lots to do. And we have no one to paddock these horses. Now, thank God Tyler Boot and Shane was here. And, he, you know, obviously John and Tyler are always good to us. And uh, he found me one person, Barry. Barry comes over and uh, says, I'll help you out. You know, I had I had $200. I would have given him $2 million if I had it. I had $200 in my pocket. I gave him that. I said, listen, can you just help us for the day? We have three horses in race, four, five, and six. They all have to go two trips. My wife and I have three horses and three kids here. Yeah, I can help you out. So, uh, first horse race is great. Garden State Deal. That's a ringer in behind me. You guys saw that. You know, I get to the head of the lane. I'm like, I think she'll trot 56. I don't know how good the incentive B is. This is our first start in Kentucky. I have no idea. Where are we going? Right. Um, I have no idea. She goes out, and uh, I heard, you know, she made a break at the Meadowlands behind the gate. It was so difficult to race this filly and get her off the gate. Mark McDonald. Uh, you know, and she just crosses over, <laughs> crosses over at will, uh, and raced great. The horse got away and behind me. I could feel him breathing down my back. And I know she doesn't trot the straightaways good, so I, I'm joking. I, I could see where Mark would have trouble with her. I've known her and gone with her a bunch of times, and he only sat behind her once. So um, I know that she's going to put a couple of steps in, get a little bumpy down the lane. And if this horse in behind me is as good as it sounds like it is, I'm going to have some trouble. And sure enough, we come out of the turn. He just jumped on me and was gone. He came 26 and 4. We came 28 flat to finish second in 156 and won a great mile by Garden State Dio, and I was super pumped, super pumped. She even touched her knee twice and cut her knee. And I, you know, I always love when the horses show that determination. You know, just show that grit where they want to do it. And Garden State Dio certainly brought that to the game today, um, and was great. The, the cuts nothing; it just put a little blue on. It's fine. Um, but a great day uh, for for Garden State Dio. So I'm pumped. Now I'm going out the track with Unbeatable Kemp, and somehow they stuffed a bison's jaw into Unbeatable Kemp's face. Because Thank you, and I yeah, he was no joke. I can tell you why they come first over with them. I don't understand this. I, it goes to the goes to the right. Oh. We just go to the right. Uh, oh, he terrifying. was so we have completely out of his tree in the post parade. I mean, crazy. I had to run him into the fence once. I'm like, what? so I thought I thought you put the snake cord underneath his tongue. That's how bad he was. So I went to pull up, and I'm like. I can tell it's not, he's not fussing with his mouth, the tongue, the tongue tying the snake cord around, right? He's just crazy. So I'm like, he's no good on the front. I just told everybody for two weeks, don't put him on the front. Don't come first over. And I know exactly what's going to happen when they say go. So they say go. I don't want to put him on the run either. He's getting a little, he's hot coming out of the gate. So I just let him float into position. I let him trot forward and now he settles in, but now he's hot. Now it's game on. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. The judges literally called me after and said, oh, Mr. McDonald, you know, we don't really have people leaning back like that. I'm like, listen, I think he just stretched my arms. I don't really, didn't really want to lean back. You know, I'm not that guy. I maybe was 10 years ago, but I'm not right now. They said, sir, he just ran away with me. And he said, oh, okay, that no problem. It might have been funny to him. It wasn't funny to me at the time. I knew I could not be on the front at all costs. So I seesawed on him and I tugged on him, but I don't want to shut his air off either. So it was a bit of a fight. And I, could, I knew that Dexter's coming. I look over. I really wanted to cut one loose. Dexter's coming. Timmy's coming right behind him. Ah, 
I know I'm going to sit in the three hole and I don't want to be first over at any cost. Most of our horses, when, when you let them coast up on the horse in front of them, that's why we train them like that for future reference, Miss McDonald. Always put them on the helmet in front because that's what happens when you don't. Oh, please. You're going to blame that on me. It seems like I'm blaming you. I'm not going to blame you because I'm happy in Kentucky right now. Wow. But okay. uh, you uh, usually our horses, when you put them on a helmet, they'll I'm settle. Right here. Even if they're hot. Right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, even if they're hot, they'll, they'll ride up on a helmet. But this guy, he wanted no part of that today. He just wanted to fight with me. And... I could hear somebody coming first over and I was not coming. And as soon as we kind of get jammed into a pack, he kind of settled a bit He at that point. And I don't know whether he's played out. I don't know whether I shut his air off a little bit, but it really took me all the way, almost getting to the far turn to get him settled. I'm following Dexter. We're trying to fish our way to the outside. It looks like Dexter's gonna find some room on the inside, but I can't say for certain he is. I don't know for sure he's gonna find room. Is there parking there? Yeah. I don't know if he's gonna find room for sure, so I start trying to fan out. Sure enough, you know, Dexter, being Dexter, it worked out great. That's why he's one of the best drivers in the world. If I follow him through the inside, maybe I make a race of it, but I was loaded. There's no two ways about it. I kind of weave out, shove somebody over, sneak through, and he come on fast. Now I was in beat, what, three lengths? Four lengths, two lengths, something like that. He we was beat. We didn't think you were gonna win. We tried it. He tried him 55, he raced huge. If I follow Dexter right through the inside and feather him to the outside, I make a race of it. I'm, I'm on his wheel if I don't beat him, but I make a race of it. He raced very, very, very good. I was super impressed. What is this you foolishness? Have to go that, you have to go that way to park over here. This is the most convoluted parking lot what I have ever seen in my life. It's like a maze. It's like, let's let the Canadians get in the parking lot and see what they do. Go that way anyway. Um, so Unbeatable Kemp was awesome. So now I'm pumped. Garden State Dio second, Unbeatable Kemp second. They both raced great, fastest miles of their lives for the most part. I guess she tied hers. Uh, there's one over here. Um, so now we just got Blue Bayou Dio. Now I warmed up Blue Bayou Dio and she was acting up going on the track. She, something was bothering her on her side. We, anyway, nothing. Um, Tyler Brutenshain was helping me get out and he goes, what's this one? And I said, you know what, those other two race good, but this Philly felt like a race car. And I'm gonna tell you something, I don't know, I haven't sat behind her personally, myself, in a long time. It's been since April, March, because I was gone to Delaware, I was gone to PEI, Jason trained her. I have never sat behind Blue by Odeo until today, for such a long time. And um, he, I said, I warmed her up, man, she feels like a rocket ship. I said, if the reports out of Ontario are correct, this filly will good, be good today. I'll tell you one thing. I got away third. I knew somebody around. I looked over my shoulder going around the first turn. I saw one or two at the back. The body language on everybody's horse, on everybody was so-so. I'm thinking to myself, this filly, unless I'm wrong, probably don't. Unless I'm wrong, this filly's going to go a big mile. Um, she ripped a shoe right off her foot, switching gears coming out of the last turn, and exploded down the lane with a vicious last quarter, 26 and 4. She looked incredible. Now the Red Mile is a mile track, it's a big track. I went all the way around. So you're supposed to pull up and go back to the winter circle. I know that my kids are in the far turn in the truck. They're in the back of the truck watching the races. Amy's in the test barn, but I know the kids are there. I go all the way around. I hold up the races, hold up sweetheart. I go all the way around and I'm looking in the truck back window to see where the kids are. They're in the winter circle, a quarter of a mile away, people waiting for us. And here comes Barry in a van, like a winter circle van. Don't worry, I got your kids. I said, what? He goes, I got your kids. I said, oh, thanks, Barry. I guess. And we go to the winter circle and we get our picture taken. It was the funniest thing ever. And it just was the cherry on top for the whole day. The Philly was great. We had, we had, um, we had clients here from Wisconsin today. Curtis was here from Wisconsin with his wife. He was so happy. He said, I've been to 30 or 40 Indy 500s. He said, I've done a lot of things. He said, but this is the best. He said, today was so awesome. And that just encapsulates. Hey, hey, leave me alone and stop playing around. This just encapsulates how good horse racing can be from time to time. Hey, do you want to come out? Yeah. Want to go swimming? Yeah. Want to go swim? Yeah. Okay, come with me. You're so dirty. 
you look filthy. You're going to have to have a shower before you go swimming. They'll never let you in the pool looking like that. Mm. Look like we just found you on the side of the road. Oh, do you want to say hello to everybody? Do you want to say hi? Do you want to say hi? Oh. Tell everybody to say, oh, what happened? You touched your pinky? Oh, oh. Do you want to kiss? Want to kiss? Mm. Say bye to everybody. Say bye. Say, I had a good day in Tucky. Daddy Yace. And I twisted my fingy, and I got my picture taken. Oh, the lady said she can get our picture taken. She can get our pictures tomorrow. Yeah. Anyway, um, Curtis came over, and he said to me, he goes, he goes, you know what? You guys do such a good job picking out babies. And I said, listen, I, I love to take any accolades for picking out babies. At the end of the day, I don't think it's me picking the babies out. I think it's the work that we put into them at the stable. I said, you look at Blue by Udeo. It wasn't that she was that much better than the other horses. She was ready to rock. Other horses, you know, your baby and these two-year-olds around the track, you don't know what they're going to do. I just wheeled her out like she was a four-year-old and let her dance the whole way down the lane. Our horses are just ready to be the best they can when they get to the races. And I've said that, and I continue to say it. I appreciate the kind words, Curtis. It's very, very nice of you. But I really believe it's a work we all put in at the stable. So, so having said that, we're going to swim now. You want to go swim? Want to go out? Yeah. Okay, you want to go swim? Say bye bye to everybody. Say I go, bye. I go pool. Say I go, I go swim. <laughs> swim? Did I yace today? Yeah. Tell everybody, do we win or yace? Yeah. Say we win. <laughs> so we are all smiles here in Kentucky. It's been a great day. It's been a great summer. Ava, hey, stop being silly. It's it's um, quite frankly, as as I also <laughs> said to somebody, maybe it was Barry, maybe it was Curtis. Stop, Ava, right now. Maybe it, uh, maybe it was Barry, maybe it was Curtis. I said, you know, if you'd asked me in April what our year was going to look like, I would have been very happy with a fraction of what we've had. As far as luck at the track, mwah. we're heading out, we're going swimming, we're going to dinner, and then tomorrow we head back to Ohio. I hope everybody's having a great weekend because it was a great day in Lexington. Take care.